I think it's a difficult topic. Hello everybody, Nitsa Gamer here, and welcome to the Top 7 Worst Things in Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric commentary. So yeah, this is going to be a unscripted commentary of the uh, countdown that I made, the Top 7 Worst Things in Sonic 06, or Sonic 06, um, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. And I'm going to be following up on a commentary for the best countdown one week later. So I'm actually recording this um, on the exact day that I first released this countdown, which is May uh, 29th. And um, I just realized it was already May 29th. And I was like, oh, shoot, I haven't even recorded this commentary yet. And it's already 3.34 in the morning. Well, what the heck, I can stay up the extra hour and watch it. So, yeah. So, a little bit of uh, history on this opening uh, cutscene, like this opening, um, uh, Jonathan's role um, was supposed to be a lot more longer than that. So yeah, JR appears there, and then of course, um, we get into an argument about Man of Steel, and then of course I break and whatever, and it was an entire concept that was completely cut out. Like, we were supposed to be arguing, but I figured that, you know what, Man of Steel hasn't been out since... 2013 or whatever it's a dead horse i might as well just cut it out it's completely pointless but obviously the whole point is that i'm beating on a dead horse which is well exactly what the point of this countdown is is to make you feel more hateful for a rise of lyric and yeah that that entire opening itself had to be cut out shorn and downed and um the thing is is that this entire rise of lyric countdown was completely different in like the original concept like the original concept was changed massively and unfortunately it caused like more than a year for this countdown to be made and all that like it was always my initial plan to make two different countdowns so the worst countdown and the best countdown and of course um i knew i wasn't going to do a good things because i just couldn't find top seven good things like, the initial intention for these countdowns is that with the worst countdown, I would be purposely making you feel all the more hateful for the game. And even by the end of it, you just feel kind of depressed and kind of pissed off. Kind of just angry, depressed, pissed off, and, you know, you just feel worse. So by the time you finish the best countdown, my intent is to hopefully make you feel better about the game than when it first found you and whatever. And yeah. I uh, love Uncharted. Really love it. I wish I got into the Crash Bandicoot games. And goddamn, just this beta stuff for Sonic Boom just looks pretty dang amazing, to be honest. I mean, I would have loved to see what it originally would have looked like. I mean, it does look like a game that does have potential, but... Yeah, unfortunately, what we got is what we got, and... Yeah. And yeah, I'm wearing the same blue shirt that I wore in my uh, Top 7 Sonic 06 countdown, so that way people would recognize, oh yeah, that's the same guy who did the good things in Sonic 06 and whatever. Yeah, and uh, as I was saying, the concept for this countdown changed drastically. Like, I was originally going to have like three different guest stars, but instead I only just had JR in the end, and he only appeared in one shot. So even his role was uh, cut down um, a lot. And I was going to have, like, um, a friend uh, from the United States and then a friend nearby. But, unfortunately, the friend nearby kind of just walked out on me. And, I, I, to be honest, I don't know if it's for the fact that he was really busy because he was saying that it was school-related, even though he was able to release two countdowns since then. I don't know. Um, I can't really be mad at the guy or anything. I mean, um... I mean, if he's busy, he's busy. If he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't want to do it. But at the same time, I really wanted to collab with this one person, mostly because he has over 20,000 subscribers. And, of course, I need to try to raise my subscriber count if I'm going to make my web series and independent film happen and, you know, try to get, you know, a good crowdfunding for it. But, of course, since he dropped out... That was a huge opportunity that was wasted for me to gain a lot of subscribers. And yeah, I will admit, um, this one friend that I tried to get in the countdown, my main intent to try to get him in was so I can gain more subscribers. And I don't know, maybe my greed got back at me, or maybe the guy was a little selfish and kind of just dropped out. I mean, either way, I can't really be too angry at him dropping out. I mean, what's done is done. I hope to collab with him again in the future, but... 
again, I, I kind of just don't want to give him the opportunity if he asks for it because I kind of want to show karma back. <coughs> ah, jeez. <sighs> yes. Try to find a way to make and yeah. Um, uh, just to answer the question, yes, that is the song "Broken" that was cut from Shadow the Hedgehog, although it was still in the game's files and. Yeah, I thought it fit um, the theme perfectly, so I used that for the worst countdown. And yes, um, this, char this character right here, people have already said who um, I am satirizing, and I don't want to say the name out loud because, yeah, it is obvious who I'm satirizing, and at the same time, I really had fun making fun of the, the guy, but at the same time, I don't want to bully him because the poor guy has been through enough bullying as is, and... I don't know. I, I just don't support bullying. I just don't support the idea of, like, already pandering on a guy who um, has already been through so much. So I'd rather not say the name out loud. But, yeah, um, the person I was satirizing is the person that you're probably thinking of and what people have already commented on. And, yeah, as far as the designs go, I'll be honest, um, Tails and Amy, I actually kind of like their designs a little bit better in the Sonic Boom universe, to be honest. Mostly because um, Amy doesn't have to wear a cliched woman's dress and, you know, Tails at least has his gadgets and whatever on him. Whereas the change on Sonic I can at least somewhat understand, but at the same time it's not really a big deal that, oh, they gave him blue arms and whatever. It's like, okay. So, what you're saying is that if uh, Mario had a little bit of a beard it would be a big deal or something? I don't know. Uh, really, putting fur on Sonic's arms is not a big deal, guys. Suck it up. But the change on Knuckles, on the other hand, I could definitely say that at first, I was mostly against it. Mostly because um, it just looked like Knuckles just got way too muscular. And for the fact that they made him dumb and all that kind of just seemed a little unfitting and kind of just out of Knuckles' character. And yeah, Knuckles is definitely very poorly portrayed in this game. In fact, most of the characters are. I mean... The only two decent characters, as I mentioned before, is Tails and Dr. Eggman. And Metal Sonic, honestly, he doesn't really make that much of an appearance in this game, and he doesn't have any lines, so I can't really say much for Metal Sonic, even though I do say that Metal Sonic is decent. Yeah, actually, another character that probably looks up at the source is, um, uh, what was his name? Rivaldi from Breath of the Wild. I swear to God, that bird, um, uses, like, a thesaurus to come up with his words, where he's all like, I mean, the idea of you vanquishing the evil is all just asinine, you know? It's just, what is it with, like, these, uh, characters that, you know, seem to look like they read from a thesaurus or something, but... I don't know, I just had to say that, and uh, unfortunately someone made the joke before me, but I just went with it anyway, and <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much uh, still have the same opinions um, of what I say in this countdown. Like, Amy is really poorly done in this game, and she's somewhat better in the TV show than she is in the main series games, and the thing is, is that from Sonic Unleashed and Up, they kind of just made her more of the stereotype. Because in Sonic Adventure 1, she tried to, she did her damnness to uh, protect a bird and try to get that bird back to its family and all that. And she, of course, you know, sticks with that and knows that it's not time to screw around with Sonic. Sonic Adventure 2, not only does she save Sonic and, of course, you know, try to help even though, well, her friends exclude her. But she also, you know, reforms um, Shadow, she reforms Gamma, and yeah, she even reforms Silver. I mean... Amy is definitely uh, an underappreciated character, but I can understand why she's unappreciated. And yeah, uh, an episode like this, Translate This, which was from episode 3 of the first season of Sonic Boom, I actually really liked uh, that episode mostly because it, it felt like it was the first time that I was getting to know the personalities of these characters. Like, you know, Stick says what she means and all that, and the characters are a little closer to the main series um, counterparts than we do think and whatever. 
And yeah, while Amy is poorly represented in this uh, game, I could definitely say the one positive is that Cindy Robinson does a really good job at performing um, Amy. And um, yeah, of course, another that joke, and I had to get the glasses on in. Uh, one mistake that I do make here is that I was mentioning that um, I was criticizing that um, uh, the yeah the voice actress uh, for Amy here was pretty Minnie Mouse-ish and pretty crappy and whatever. Well, apparently it's Cindy Robinson. So I praise Cindy Robinson and unintentionally um, bash Cindy Robinson at the same time. Um, Sorry about that, Cindy, um, but you definitely do a really great job with the uh, Sonic Boom version of Amy, that's for sure. As for the uh, main series, I don't know if it's more of a directional issue or if it's Cindy's problem, I don't know, but uh, I, de I definitely prefer Amy's voice from Sonic Boom over the main series games, or I, I mean the current um, Cindy Robinson in the main series games. I mean, I don't like the Minnie Mouse's voice and all that. And yeah, Knuckles, oh my god, what have you done to this guy? Now, surprisingly, I actually really do like Knuckles from the TV show. Now, there are some painful moments where he does have to act all dumb for the sake of being dumb, but at least they do give him a personality. At least he does have that bit of um, short-tempered aggression that is um, from the main series and whatever, which is... None of it is represented here. It's just, oh, it's really poorly done. And yeah, Sonic, in my opinion, is like the biggest insult in this entire game. Mostly because, um, well, pretty much my number three point. Now, some people have stated that my number three point should have been my number one point. And while my number three point definitely got me, you know, really, really angry... At the same time, it's only one moment in the game of Sonic, Trap, and Larrick, and yeah, I mean, just this, uh, Sonic, Trap, and Larrick, it's it's just one freaking scene. It's kind of like saying that um, the worst change in um, the Star Wars, um, the the original Star Wars films is that the worst change is Han shooting first, it should have been Han shooting first, and whatever, and it's like, come on, it's not the worst change. I mean, yeah, it kind of botches the character and all that, but... You know, it was it could have been worse and all that. You know, like the unnecessary dance sequence at Jabba's Palace, or, or where you have like this creature's butt getting in the way when uh, we're being demonstrated what the Force can do, and all that. Um, the thing is, is that there were definitely uh, worse things that actually do make this game a lot worse. Even though the change with Sonic definitely does make me hate this game all the more. And yeah, Shadow, what the hell have you guys done? Now, personally, I've only seen half of season one of the TV show. And the reason why is because I made the rule where I can't watch the next episode until I've done a vlog review on it. Unfortunately, I've only done half of season one. And then after that, I kind of just stopped. Not only because of the copyright issue, which is now fully resolved. I have all rights to the episodes back again. But I kind of need the inspiration to continue my Sonic Boom vlogs. And yeah, Shadow appears in the last episode. And unfortunately, he's not better in the TV show either. They still portray him as this arch rival who is evil. Whereas in the main series game, he's more neutral or anything. Like, there's a moral amb ambiguity and whatever where he can make bad choices or whatever. But he ultimately does make the right choice in the end to save the world and such and you know that was the one thing that was great about shadow's character is his moral ambiguity and of course um him making such a difficult choice and what he should do now of course his original purpose was to benefit mankind when he was being invented like created and whatever but of course maria's death is what triggers gerald robotic to alter his memory and um make him think that he was built to um destroy the entire planet to which of course he remembers Maria's last promise and ultimately makes the choice to uh, fulfill what Maria wanted as opposed to getting his like the revenge and whatever and, you know it was just really great and Shadow the Hedgehog like it or hate it does actually continue on with those themes and it does actually make it 
not only deeper, but um, it actually makes the choices in it all the more... Like, like he actually does make the choice himself as opposed to, oh, this is how I was supposed to be? Okay. And if you want proof of that, well, look at the last story in uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. He actually makes the decision before he actually sees the recording of Gerald Robotnik prior to Maria's death. He makes the choice. It's not like it was like, no, this is what you were set out to be. Now this is what you have to become. In fact, Shadow the Hedgehog actually fixes those uh, problems, if anything. And honestly, Shadow the Hedgehog is a game that I... It's my guilty pleasure. I actually like uh, Shadow the Hedgehog, the video game, and yeah, it, it's more polarized than anything that it is hated, but it surprises me that people actually find Shadow the Hedgehog to be worse than Sonic 06 or Sonic Boom Rise of Larry, when it's not. It's really not. I mean, it's not a great game. It's very flawed for sure, especially with the mission structure and some uh, slippery controls here and there, but... I don't know, I just really did enjoy Shadow the Hedgehog as a whole, and I felt like it did actually do what it was, what it should have done and whatever. There were some unnecessary moments for sure, but, um, I don't know, I, I thought Shadow the Hedgehog was a good addition, and it kind of justified, um, Shadow's resurrection in Sonic Heroes, and if anything, a lot of the flaws from Shadow the Hedgehog were more flaws that came from Sonic Heroes, and... Yeah, I know I'm kind of going off topic, and I should be talking more about this countdown, but honestly, there's really not much to talk about until I get to some of the live-action moments, because those were the moments that I definitely had to revise the most. And yeah, the dialogue is, oh my god, very painful. But yeah, the TV show, um, it doesn't have perfect dialogue. Like, the TV show definitely does a better job at its satirical sense of humor, and... Well, I haven't seen Season 2, I've seen clips from Season 2, and holy crap, they really take the full potential to be a full, great satire for not only the Sonic series, but even some political topics, surprisingly, which I'm actually really glad to see. I mean, yeah, there are definitely some painful writing in um, the TV show, but there there is definitely a lot more smarter writers who knew what they were doing when uh, coming up with the jokes for the episodes, or any kind of punchlines or whatever. Whereas in this game, there's... Honestly, there you, you can kind of see the idea for the joke and whatever, but when you have to do something like, uh, well, there's no time like the present. Wait, there are presents? Or when Knuckles is going like, uh, we're heroes, so we can obviously help. I mean, we're pretty much a big deal. It's like, are you serious right now? This is like lame, lame writing. And as I said, um... Even if the other Sonic games don't do a great job, at least they establish not only the motivations, but at least they establish what they need to establish in the story and what is necessary. Whereas here, they're constantly staying the obvious, and of course, um, it's just terribly written and the jokes are not that well thought out. Now, is there a joke that might work? Maybe, but not that I remember. And yeah, that that's my younger sister. She's about... 10 years old, I think, so I was basically saying that, um, yeah, like I'm a 7-year-old who needs to know where to go, but of course, hey, kids are smarter than we give them credit for, so of course I um, uh, had my 9-year-old sister play a 7-year-old just to kind of satirize, hey, kids are smarter than they seem and whatever. Unfortunately, um, Emily's kind of, um, e she can easily get into any kind of fat, unfortunately. I mean... She's been recently watching Smurfs 2, which I'm like, oh, why? Uh, that movie just, oh, so cringy. Uh, I, I, it just sucks when bad products have to be marketed out to children and whatever. And man, I wish this uh, delivery was uh, delivered a lot more better. Yeah. Kaiju, uh, meaning the monsters, you know, Japanese uh, monsters and whatever, kind of like the uh, monsters from Pacific Rim or whatever. That's what I meant by Kaiju. And um, the, the thing is, is that I wish that was a lot more better delivered. In fact, I had two ideas for it. One was actually a scene from the film Prince of Egypt where uh, God smites all the firstborns. And then, of course, you would have... Um, 
uh, Remesis or the, um, the the king of Egypt um, mourning over the death of his son going, not cool, God, not cool. Or another uh, clip that I did actually download and I did have in the files for a little while is where you have Scar throwing Mufasa off the edge and then Simba later, you know, pounding Scar to the ground and going, not cool, Scar, not cool. Like, those were the original two ideas that I was going to have, but I felt like I should have sticked with something Sonic related because I barely show any kind of films um, within, like, this entire canto. In fact, I don't think I showed a single film clip. I think the majority were pretty much um, Sonic games, and I think I do occasionally show... Um, uh, something from uh, Super Mario 64 and um, uh, Ocarina of Time and yeah. And oh my god, the combat in this game just holy shit was this repetitive. Oh man, I really hated the combat in this game. I mean, if you liked it, great. But not only does the frame rate issues not help, but it was like all over the place and... When you want to play a Sonic game, you're playing it for speed and platforming, not beat them up until they finally explode. I mean, they take a long time to finally explode. Uh, I really just... Oh, uh, God. This game is bad. This game is bad, but not only is Sega aware of it... In fact, I think they were aware of it before it was released, which is why they didn't send out review copies. But yeah, just, oh my god, it's just, um, I mean, yeah, the speed sections had frame rate and issues, but I would have preferred that more than this. But honestly, I think the best thing in this game, uh, in terms of gameplay, was definitely the boss fights. They, they, I think the boss fights were definitely the best thing in this game, but even then, the drill worm was like, you know, the worst, um, boss in the entire game, and, uh, that, that boss can just go to hell. Like, like, I personally wouldn't mind fighting against any other boss in this game other than the uh, Drill Worm boss. I, I, don't, I honestly don't remember its name. And yeah, for some reason, that combo meter does nothing. Yeah, 5 hits, 6 hits, and yeah, that continues to rise, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't improve your combat, it doesn't give you extra reins or anything. I don't even know why that's there. I mean, maybe something was implemented and then kind of forgotten, or maybe they just wanted to show how good you could be. I don't know what the intended purpose was, but yeah, the combo meter does nothing, and it's kind of just, why is that even there? I mean, if you're going to put that there, then at least have something be beneficial or something. And yeah, this is where uh, I cut to... Um, my roommate friends, uh, Sam and Aaron, and yes, they are real. I'm not uh, moving them off camera. And yeah, they're pretty much supposed to be the moral compass of this entire countdown. I mean, they don't make much of an appearance. And the thing is, is that the guest stars that I was originally going to have were going to be more of my moral compass. And even JR was going to play more of that role as well. Unfortunately, since I, since I couldn't get the other two... Um, uh, to uh, be in this countdown, I ultimately had to, well, resort to my roommate friends and whatever, which was kind of a silly concept and whatever, but I don't know, I hope you guys liked it. And yeah, actually, one of the other guest stars that I was going to have in um, this countdown actually did appear in my Sonic 06 countdown, and his name is Miles. In fact, he's the one that reacts to my number 5 point when I'm mentioning the companionship between Sonic and Elise, and... My number two point when I mentioned Silver the Hedgehog, and yeah, he kind of reacts and goes, what? And um, yeah, he's a really funny guy. I really like him. Um, yeah, he, he has a YouTube channel, which uh, now that I'm kind of mentioning him, I'll post his uh, channel link in the description. He does gaming videos himself along with um, some friends. D definitely check him out. He's a really funny guy. I mean, even if he didn't appear in this countdown, um, d definitely check Miles out. He's a really funny guy. And he definitely needs all the views that he can get on his gaming channel. I mean, he's very low on it. And um, here's the thing, is that when it comes to these hub worlds, um, honestly, Cliff's excavation site wasn't really so bad. I mean, there's more than visually remembered with all the trees above. And honestly, it's not that badly designed, to be honest. I mean, it's linear, yeah, but at least it's um, 
done in not only a tolerable way, but at least it's not as repetitive as, well, Bygone Island. I mean, Bygone Island was horribly put together, but this, there's shortcuts. There's, um, like, speed ramps to get to places and whatever, and, um, yeah, that's kind of a bug, but I don't care. It looks kind of cool. I don't know. And I don't know. Cliff's excavation site honestly wasn't that bad. It's not great, but it honestly wasn't that bad. I just wish they put more NPCs around the area. In fact, why could someone be on the beach, you know, just laying down, getting a suntan, or being complete nudist? I don't care. Do something. Make this place seem more lively or whatever. Now, I get that, obviously, they have to consider the frame rate issue, but... Oh, man, it, it just sucks um, that, of course, the frame rate issue and for the fact that the Wii U couldn't run um, Cry... What was it called? Uh, Cry Engine? Yeah, Cry Engine. Um, for the fact the Wii U couldn't run Cry Engine properly just made this all the more uh, painful to watch and whatever. And yeah, by the time I was scripting this countdown and whatever, um, the I didn't know about... Um, the Wii U not being able to run CryEngine, so of course, when I get to my number two point, and I'm talking about them not caring to fix it up, that was of course um, before I knew about uh, the fact that CryEngine wouldn't work on the Wii U, and um, yeah, it, it sucks when it has to resort to a problem like that, and unfortunately there are some situations where I can relate to a, a singular problem suddenly becoming a huge massive problem and whatever, and, um, I, I don't know, it's just, um, the thing is that I was considering of, um, like, adding that bit of information in, but I decided to remove it because it wouldn't actually, um, uh, stay, like, I also had to focus on the theme of what these countdowns were meant to be. This first countdown was meant to raise the hate, so you hate it even more, so when you get to the second countdown, not only do we talk about redeemable things, but you ultimately come to the acceptance of reality that failure does happen and in the most unfair ways and whatever. And uh, man, I feel so sorry for the people that worked really hard on this game just to have, I don't know, over or under a million buy this game. I mean, I don't know how many people have purchased this game as of now, but it was only like, um, like one-fourth of a way to a million um, within, like, um, three months or something. Um, I, I mean, I forget what the statistic was or whatever. And, yeah, oh, my God, it took forever to actually get to the next level here. Like, I purposely did not show where the Switch would be because I wanted people to play this for themselves. Well, not that I wanted you to, but when people play this for themselves, I want you guys to find where the Switch is because... Oh my god, was it in the most ridiculous place ever. And, oh man, it, 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 this game's bad. This game is bad. Just, oh my god, just... It, maybe a lot of help, Amy. A lot of help. And yeah, I mean, the hubs in uh, Sonic 06 were worse. I mean, they were definitely bland and whatever. But with the way that Bygone Island is represented, I mean, what the hell happened to this Bygone Island? I mean, look at the waterfall in the background. It's beautiful, guys. I mean, those flowers made it into the final game. Yeah, but, oh my god, I really wanted to, I honestly kind of wanted to play that beta world and whatever. I mean, it looks far more promising than, well, this. I mean, yeah, it's definitely seen better days, Sonic. I mean, jeez. And yeah, I had the three smack the four just to foreshadow, well, Sonic being a dick and whatever. And yeah, insert semen joke and whatever, but um, yeah. Um, the guy I'm satirizing is a straight guy, by the way. But then again, I don't even know what gender he is anymore. But yeah, this is the one uh, highlight of the countdown where I start to be less funny and I start to get a little bit more serious and angry and trust me when I say when I was recording this I pretty much try to keep an angry uh, mindset throughout this entire thing keeping myself frustrated but also calm when I had to do retakes and whatever and just uh it's just 
yeah, I just had to make the Man of Steel comparison, not only because I um, had to remove the scene with, um, well, the Man of Steel argument that I would have with JR just ultimately resulting in me looking more uncontrolled and all that. Like, the thing is, is that when I'm going, when I'm getting all angry in this countdown, A, yes, I am stating my opinions, but B, I'm also kind of over-exaggerating it, so... Not everything that you see is pretty much what I really do feel. I mean, I'm purposely over-exaggerating my hate. So that way it makes the uh, countdown all the more effective and whatever. It, it makes the ending message all the more stronger. Because I purposely wanted to have you guys in a very bad position when watching this countdown. So when you watch the best countdown... Uh, the ending moral is all the more stronger because of how much I made you hate the game even more watching this countdown. And the thing is, is that I definitely deliver it within um, my number three and number two point and a little bit of my number one point. And um, yeah, just, oh my god, just, I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, yes, there are people that have justified this cutscene, but... Much to my surprise, when I said that the majority of people would not agree with me on, um, you know, Sonic Trap and Lyric as being a worst, like, one of the worst things in this game. Surprisingly, I had a lot of people in the comments not only agree with me, but there was even one person that was like, you know, number three should have been your number one point. And in many ways, this should have been my number one point. But as I said before, it's kind of like, um you know, Han shot first and whatever. It's just one freaking scene. And yes, yeah, Sonic is not better throughout the rest of the story, but this is just one freaking scene in an entire big game and whatever. Yes, it sucks. But at the same time, what is worse? Something that's all throughout the game or just one scene that you kind of just hate? I mean, yes, this really got me angry. Not only just during my Let's Play, and I've referenced it, I don't know, so many times during my Let's Play, but I always point to this scene as a reason why Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric sucks, mostly because of how out of character Sonic was. And the thing is, is that there was no reason for Sonic to do this. Like, Sonic is supposed to be a character with a heart of gold. I mean, I mean... I'm not expecting him to, you know, reform Lyric and Lyric's like, okay, I'll be good again or whatever. You know, at least try to, um, at least, you know, win Lyric over or at least, um, try to reform him or at least make him think about what he's doing rather than just going, oh, I already know that you're going to be evil. And yeah, I really get angry at this moment where I yell morons and whatever. It's just, Oh, man, I really get angry here, and it's just beautiful to listen to, to be honest. Um, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if one of the people who made Sonic Boom kind of just stopped watching the video at this point. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they did, and um, I, I hope you guys know, um, for those of you who made this game, I hope you guys know that I'm not trying to uh, make you guys feel bad it's just more for satirical purposes, so I can make my message in the best countdown all the more stronger. And yeah. Yeah, kind of interesting how Sonic can have more heart than Tikal, considering how much heart Tikal had. And yeah, Merlina is the villain of Sonic and the Black Knight. Spoiler alert. Yeah. I really liked over-exaggerating just um, uh, these two different scenarios and just showing how much it would suck if Sonic kind of just went with what he did here and whatever. And with what he did here was not only unjustified, but it was not it was just out of character for him. And just, oh god. I don't know who wrote that scene or how the direction was taken or if there was an alternate... Um, you know, revision or whatever that ultimately said, no, let's not waste with emotions. Let's kind of just rush this up or whatever, or, you know, vomit something out and hope someone doesn't get pissed. Well, congratulations, you pissed me off. And yeah, much to my surprise, a lot of people did actually get pissed off at this scene. There's some people that kind of overlooked it and kind of just go, meh. In fact, there was actually one other Sonic Let's Player that actually did get angry at uh, Sonic Trap and Lyric. Or, not necessarily angry, but he was like, I actually don't like that. And it was, um, 
Tanner, I believe his name is, from the Sonic show. Like, he did a let's play, a blind let's play on Sonic Boom Rise of Larrick. And yeah, he even admitted that he didn't like uh, this scene, but he didn't get nearly as angry as I did. But I felt like this scene didn't uh, get, get the hate that it deserved. So that's kind of why I over-exaggerated and all that. Um, you know, trying to bring a lot more hate to this. So not only would I make the best um, Countdown Moral stronger, but also so I could, uh, well, get what I wanted to get across and whatever. And yeah, I do kind of go off on the tangent where I'm like, try to reform Larry, even though I did say before that Sonic can fail and all that. But then I'm kind of going back saying that Sonic should have been able to when... No, that's not what I meant. What I meant to say was that um, Sonic should try to reform Larrick, but failed to do so, and Larrick would blame Sonic for the Ancients capturing him and whatever. And, you know, that's this, what I think should have gone down. And the thing is, is that Sonic hasn't been better in the TV show. Again, I've only watched half of season one, but there were legit moments in the TV show where I felt like they understood what Sonic meant and whatever. Like, um, it was in, uh, Circus of Plunders, I think the episode was called. Um, you have, um, Styx, Knuckles, and Amy who are being total bitches going up against Tails for simply failing and whatever. To which, of course, Sonic defends them. And I was like, you go, Sonic. You're, you're a brother to Tails. You do what you gotta do and whatever. And, um, yeah, if they... I know Sonic Forces is not going to do this, but if they do make another Sonic game, I really wish they have a Sonic game where they focus more on um, Sonic and Tails' friendship and whatever. And, and, like, more, kind of focus more on it, develop it, or show how far they've gone, or even have them fight or whatever. I don't know. And, um, yeah, if you actually go back a little, I think there was actually kind of a misplaced uh, pink box that was up in, um, near, um one of the NPCs, uh, houses, again, I, I prefer to forget this game than actually remember the NPC names, but yeah, seriously, screw this scene, screw this scene big time, it's just, oh man, I really hated it, and yeah, there was actually more extended stuff for me throwing the cereal and all that, which I'll get to after the commercial break, Now, the thing is, is that the guest star who actually dropped out was supposed to be um, with me during my number four and number three point, where he agrees with me, but of course, I'm going all angry, and by the way, when I bumped my arm, that wasn't scripted, that was actually accidental, and that actually hurt for the next 18 hours, so I kind of improvised around that, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, essentially, he would actually be in the same room, and then I'm kind of all like, um, you know what, man? Just forget about this game. Just forget this entire beeping idea because it must be so crazy because I'm so crazy than the rest of all of you. I'm just a Nitsa gamer with a dead childhood. <laughs> forget this game. And then I say beep this game as I throw the ball on the ground. Now, I it would actually parody a scene from... A movie called Silver Lions Playbook where Jennifer Lawrence's character freaks out at uh, Bradley Cooper's character where um, she freaks out over um, uh, the main character having a, an obsession over Jennifer Lawrence's um, uh, problems and whatever and kind of her sexuality and all that. How she kind of freaks out and throws the cereal down and all that. Like that was the reason why I had cereal to begin with is because um, it, that's... Moment was originally supposed to um, parody uh, Silver Lion's playbook, but unfortunately, uh, the context just couldn't uh, work out without the guest star and all that. In fact, I did try to record some of it, but yeah, and yeah, I was pretty much improv in and overreacting. In fact, I woke up somebody and they had to come down, and I was like, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and of course, the guest star would ultimately leave upon my freak out and go, you know what, this game is just not worth playing and whatever. And they would, rightfully so, just kind of let it go. Whereas I'm kind of given a reason to be all the more hateful for it, therefore, you know, supporting the message at the end of the countdown and whatever, which of course is, you know, accept failure for what it is. 
you know, don't make a big deal about it. Stop. It's not worth bitching and moaning about. If it fails, you just simply learn from failure or whatever. It's not like um, this ultimately means that Sonic games are going to be bad from now on. I mean, yes, there's going to be bad Sonic games to come. But there's also going to be good Sonic games to come. And some that will even be critically acclaimed. I mean, I mean, it's not, I mean, it, they clearly show it's not going to be easy to make a Sonic game. But it is possible. It is possible. And there are definitely possibilities not only within gameplay, but also within story and whatever. And, um, yeah, the frame rating in here, just, oh my god, it's awful. And, yeah, this actually happened during my Let's Play, where I completed the side quest, and, of course, that disappeared. But, yeah, it's unbelievable just how unpolished this game is, and just how full of mistakes there are. Now, I seem to find when I'm editing uh, my Let's Plays or whatever, I seem to find that one frame um, uh, lighting um, defects or character positions or whatever is not uncommon in video games in that um, sometimes you'll see a model out of place or a lighting uh, changing within one frame every time a scene uh, cuts to the next scene and... Um, yeah, it, it's not unusual for any game, not just a Sonic game, but any game in general. But yeah, it's ridiculous with um, Rise of Lyric. It seems to happen for more than one frame, which is ridiculous. <laughs> oh man, it, you just look at the backgrounds. You can tell something is popping out, but it just doesn't come out. It's ridiculous. I mean, I really want to see what the heck this game would have been if it was brought to its full potential. Yeah, definitely another overreaction uh, moment. And yeah, that was definitely overreacted and whatever. And again, this was scripted and recorded before I knew that uh, CryEngine wouldn't run on the Wii U and whatever. And the thing is, is that I was considering of, like, adding a caption or a little bit of a voiceover where I was going, okay, well, it appears that CryEngine wouldn't run on the Wii U and that if this game was on the um, PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, then it would have run better and whatever. But the thing is, is that I wanted to make um, everybody, you know, angry at this game and whatever. I want people angry at this game so that way it makes the message, again, at the end of my best count on all the more stronger. And that's the thing, is that when you have to get a message across, sometimes you have to make sacrifices and make yourself look more hateful than you actually are and whatever. Because if anything, I'm presenting more of a character, if anything, than I am myself. I mean, my opinions are still my opinions, but when I overreact, I'm portraying more of a character, if anything. You know, I'm not trying to offend any of the creators that made this or whatever. You know, I'm just stating not only my opinions, but I'm using it for satirical purposes to make the message at the end all the more stronger. And yet, number one, the bajillion misopportunities. And the thing is, is that I think the biggest problem in this game is for the fact that there are too many problems. Which I think makes number one all the more fit and then just frame rate and issues or just, well, Sonic being a total dick and whatever. And, and the thing is that these dishonorable mentions, if they weren't in the game and they were all perfect and flawless and whatever, then um, honestly, the game wouldn't be as bad, to be honest. I mean, you can have like frame rate in and rendering problems. You can have Sonic Trap and Larry. But if these um, dishonorable mentions I mentioned weren't actual problems... Admit it, the game would probably be somewhat decent, if not actually fun or whatever. I mean, maybe not, because you still have to deal with combat and dialogue and character change. Actually, no, I think the game would probably still suck either way, but, um, yeah. Ocarina of Time, I love you. Please, I want more of you. No, not Rise of Lyric. I want more, um, Ocarina of Time, please. And yeah, power of Jesus. I was I originally <clears throat> I originally scripted a moment where Jesus would have been like, "Oh hell no, you can't run like I can on water or whatever." I just cut it out. It just wasn't worth it. <clears throat> and oh my god, I actually kind of forgot Cliff was in this game to be honest. 
He's just that forgettable of a character. And dude, is that belt even comfortable on you without pants on? Jeez. I mean, is there any other character who wears a belt um, and doesn't wear any clothes? Actually, Bake the Cat does, but then again, Bake the Cat does fishing, and while Cliff does um, excavation, like archaeology and all that sort of stuff, so it kind of makes sense for him, but eh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I never had to live the nudist lifestyle, so I don't know uh, what's comfortable and what's not, so eh. No, it's clue, Sonic. Ah, <clears throat> oh, man. What the hell was supposed to happen there with that ship? I mean, whatever happened there was so incomplete. <clears throat> Jeez. Uh, I hope I don't get um, a sore throat in the morning. Okay. And Sonic's death. The one thing that they foreshadowed the beginning just to go, Oh, no, just a bruise. Let's keep on going. In fact, even repair the ground, it's just, it's pretty bad when you have to make this the kissing scene of all scenes, um, all the more worth it. Uh, oh man, and this undersea ball, this got me very frustrated. In fact, if you watch, um, my Let's Play, I get not only so angry at this, but the people who were sleeping were, like, uh, debating whether or not to stop me because I was disturbing them from their sleep, and... Oh man, I feel so sorry for them because, oh, I get so angry when doing this and just, oh man, add a checkpoint at the halfway spot, guys. Jeez. <laughs> oh, Larrick, so many missed opportunities for you, buddy. Oh uh, man, it sucks that Larrick didn't get the opportunity that he deserved, but yeah. And yeah, it sucks that I couldn't have this countdown fulfilled in the original intention and whatever. Like, JR would have made, you know, much more of an appearance and whatever. Miles would have also appeared in this, not just as a guy that goes, what? And, um, yeah. And yes, I know I spelled awkward wrong. I'm sorry. Kind of an awkward moment. But you know what? It can't be any more awkward than these awkward, uh, cutscenes. Or, not really cutscenes, but conversations. I mean, the thing is, is that, yeah, technically the Sonic Adventure ones are stiffer, but at least they're making believable contact and whatever, whereas here, they're just repeating the same animation over and over. Like, it's barely any variety, and the thing is, is that, yeah, they were limited with um, Sonic Adventure, but the thing is, is that at least they took the stances that they needed to present what they need to present. It wasn't at its best, but at least they... Did what they could. I mean, look at this turtle. He repeats his animation when he holds his hands up in the air, arm to the left, points at the bottle, arms up in the air, and then he's gonna hold his left arm out. Yeah, see, it repeats the animation. That is just lazy. And oh my god, I love um, the soundtrack in a Sonic game. I mean, even Sonic Lost World, which doesn't have the best soundtrack, still has some pretty good tracks here and there. But, oh my god, Rise of Lyric, what have you done? And, yeah. Didn't include um, the soundtrack as number one in my top seven countdown. And again, the reason why is because I don't think all tracks are completely memorable. And honestly, I found the Hub World ones kind of bland. And um, his world was kind of the reason why I got Sonic 06 to begin with. But yeah, as far as this game goes, just... Again, it's like somebody playing a flute encouraging you to sleep and whatever. It's just not only forgettable, but it's just... It, it just doesn't get you in the mood to press forward, and that's a serious problem. I mean, yeah, maybe the only exception is the title screen music, which, honestly, to be fair... To be fair, this music, the title screen music, is actually a lot more memorable than I did give it credit for. Do 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. And you know what? I just had to make Orbon and Cubot appear because god damn it, I'm pretty sure people find these guys cute, so I just had to include them in there. Yeah. And that's from episode ten, dudes where's my eggman? Pretty good episode. Um and yeah. Nature versus technology. Like, I eventually picked up on uh, the fact that this game was about nature versus technology when I got to my second session, I think. It was somewhere around there. 
like when I got to my second session, I eventually picked up on the fact that um, that that was the theme of the game is, of course, um, nature versus technology. And I kind of thought of that myself before knowing that was actually the intention. And again, I'm only halfway on the TV show, so I don't know if they expanded more on the conflict. There's elements of it, but it was never the focus. I love you, Quincy. I love you so much. Actually, to be honest, I kind of do want to see Quincy in the Sonic Boom television show. Like, a little bit more Quincy in the Sonic Boom television show. Like, I don't know. It would be kind of nice. And, yeah, I was mentioning that the plant life, like, all the moss on um, that robot and all that. I thought that was actually a nice touch of detail showing that um, she's actually um, willing to, you know, fight with our heroes and whatever. Because, yeah, you have, like, her with Moss on that robot, and that shows that she's, of course, on Sonic and, well, his friend side and whatever. But then when you look at the other robots, like, you look at all the enemies, they don't have a single bit of Moss on them, and they've been inactive for a thousand years. How the hell is that possible? I mean, it's kind of lazy, but it was a nice touch of detail. I mean, look at every single robot that appears in the game. There's no Moss on them. And if anything, the moss kind of shows whether or not if they're pro-nature um, or if they're on Larry's side. And I thought that was actually a nice touch, is that the, the enemies actually didn't have moss on them. But um, the robot that helped us um, not only did, but um, I thought that was a nice touch. I mean, even Larry doesn't have moss on him. Showing all the more that, you know, he believes that technology is the way to thrive and whatever, and that nature is what screws everything up. Yeah. But if it weren't for nature, then technology wouldn't exist, uh, dumbass. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I played Crash Bandicoot, to be honest. I mean, I still haven't, and probably that was the bad example to compare it to, but, um... Yeah, I'm definitely gonna get the, um, Cra Crash Bandicoot, um... And Saint Trilogy, and did I say Banjo Kazooie? I think I accidentally said Banjo Kazooie. If I say Banjo Kazooie, I'm in Crash Bandicoot. Sorry. Um, yeah, I never played Crash Bandicoot, so I'm probably going to with the End Saint Trilogy, hopefully. But yeah, I did play Banjo Kazooie, so yeah. But yeah, the the television show is not perfect by any means. It's not the best show out there, but at least there's smart people behind it. I was definitely entertained than I was um, finding stuff painful and all that. And there's definitely more good episodes than there are bad episodes. So, yeah, when it comes to Sonic Boom, I would recommend the TV show. I still can't say anything about Shadow Crystal. And with Sonic Boom, Fire and Ice, I actually... It's, it's a good game. It's a good game. It's not great, but it's a good game. I, I played enough to... Um, Play the majority of it. I still haven't been it to be honest, but I played most of it and I enjoyed most of it for the most part. And just uh screw that undersea bolt level. Yeah. And that's pretty much all I have to say. The ending would have actually been the same. Like the guest star would have left after I spill my cereal, and honestly, this ending would still kinda be the same. But I think after I leave my room and whatever, I would have actually showed what the other two guest stars were doing, including JR. And, um, and the thing is that I did have to cut it short, unfortunately, not only due to, uh, well, the fact that I needed to get this countdown out there. Because I didn't release this countdown until 2016. The game was released at the end of 2014. And I was trying to release the countdown, you know... You know, a few months after I do my Let's Play and whatever. But, of course, with um, the guest star screwing me up. And, of course, school, revisions, work, all that sort of stuff. I changed a lot in this countdown. Like, um, like if I were to name every single thing that was changed in this countdown, it would just be way too much. I mean, in this montage, I would have actually showed the other three guest stars. And then this would have been the last shot of Sam and Aaron staring at that mystical light. Uh, from the email from S of S. So yeah, there you go, guys. That was um, the top seven worst things in Sonic Boom Rise of Lairk. So the intended purpose was to make you feel all the more hateful. So that way the message at the end of the best countdown could actually get you all the more... Uh, it'll like make you feel better about the game when it first found you and whatever. 
And hopefully that did work for you guys. So yeah, bad game, bad game. But what's done is done. Can't fix what is broken. Move on. Hopefully Sonic Forces becomes an awesome game. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching um, this uh, commentary. And yeah, all I can say is um, I can't use annotations. God damn you, YouTube. Just why? But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the commentary when I do the top seven best things in Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric next week. Goodbye and um, have a great day, guys. Have a great day. No, have a terrible day.